I have officially been playing Rise of Kingdoms for over five years now, which is a shocking milestone. And based on my consecutive login days, it looks like I've only missed like 19 logins in the past five years which is that actually might be considered an addiction boys I think I think that might be the I mean there's worse things to be addicted to but regardless over these past five years as you can imagine I'm not perfect I've made some pretty massive mistakes that have costed me over 1850 legendary commander sculptures and over 450,000 gems yes you heard that right I did the math for this video so today we're gonna go over 10 of the biggest mistakes that I have made here in rise of kingdoms and number 10 you're probably going to shed a tear for number 10. all right let's jump right into this and there's actually a couple of mistakes on the screen here but the first mistake that i want to go over is crafting the hammer of the sun and moon now this is not a bad piece it is statistically the highest amount of inventory stats that i can put in the weapon slot however the problem that i have with the hammer of sun and moon is that now that we know they're changing the equipment system i don't know if this is going to stay the best in slot weapon and the infantry attack here isn't that exciting for me I honestly was hoping when I crafted this that I would get the talent on the first craft I know the probability of that was very low but I was like oh my god if I get the talent on this I'm set for life which would have been awesome there was a little bit of gambling there of course okay that was that's part of the reason why I crafted it okay I'm, a, I'm addicted to the rush of possibly getting that crit okay but it didn't happen and the reason that I feel like this was a mistake for my account is because the hammer of sun and moon is pretty good for things like rally and garrisons but I actually feel like the shield of the eternal empire as a long-term play might have actually been a better choice for me. And the reason for that is the four piece set bonus here for the shield gives you a 10% March speed increase, which for infantry, I feel like having 20% attack and 10% March speed is just better than having 25% attack, which is what you get from the hammer of sun and moon when it's not talented. And also it's easier to talent the shield of the eternal empire than it is to talent the hammer of sun and moon now in all of this we're talking about extremely late game investments right because regardless most of you watching should not craft the shield of the eternal empire and you certainly should not be crafting the hammer of sun and moon like most people 95 percent of players even if they're infantry mains they should be building out two or three infantry sets before they even consider something like this because the sakura fabuki is super good and so is the gatekeeper shield both of these items are pretty much equivalent in my mind as far as effectiveness in pvp we've made a lot of videos talking about that so i'm not going to talk about it now but when you do enter that late 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 end game for equipment i think that for my account i made the wrong choice even though from a point for point perspective the hammer of sun and moon is technically the best when you get the talent i think i kind of would have preferred the march speed here moving on to my second mistake this is where i wasted over 450,000 gems now just to be clear i'm telling you these mistakes so that way you don't make them so i wasted 450,000 gems on this mistake so that way you can save some and i hope that i can at least get a like on this video to pay respects for all the gems that i've literally thrown in the trash for merely a bullet point on this list but the second mistake that we're going to talk about in this video is partial investments in bad commanders and what do you know we've got our boy chuck okay i've got a five 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 one chuck here and if we come up to the little eye you will see that i have 380 chuck sculptures uh no universals were used on chuck i've gotten all of these from the infantry wheels of fortune and if you assume that i'm getting these at about 800 gems a piece right on average obviously i don't know exactly how lucky i have been or how lucky i haven't been but i think 800 is pretty fair to assume okay it could be a thousand it could be 700 i don't know okay but let's just assume i spent 800 gems of sculpture that's 304,000 gems that i spent on wheels of fortune for chook for a commander that I eventually at the very last minute decided I'm actually done with this I don't need to spin for him I he he's just not good okay now I was spinning these wheels because back then I was all in on infantry all right and I basically was like okay well I'm gonna build three infantry armies and surely an expertise chuck will fit in there somewhere even though he's not good uh in terms of in the grand scheme of things you know when you need six infantry commanders surely one of the newer ones 
would land in there and as it turns out he's just not good enough man he's just not good so I pulled the plug early I decided to not expertise him I decided it was a sunk cost it is what it is it's a waste and I was hoping that eventually there would be the perfect pairing for Chuck and he would really pop off but there's just not enough here there really just isn't I don't know what they can do about that to make him better I think the problem is this this AoE here on the expertise it's so low man it's just such a small amount of damage factor if this was much higher maybe we would have seen something I'm not really sure but I wasted a ton of gems here and that's not where this actually ends because he's not the only commander that I did this for I know I know now this is an old mistake this is an, a mistake that i made a very long time ago okay so please bear with me all right to be fair we can't see how many sculptures that i spun for but i will say with confidence that i got him to 5511 before i stopped okay the rest of these i actually got from i think the commander re-release chests and also opening the legendary tavern chests okay there's been a couple of different sources of me getting Genghis Khan since I stopped spinning the wheel for him literally years ago but even still I wasted 5511 as 190 legendary commander sculptures okay so again if you assume that I spend about 800 gems per sculpture there that's 152,000 gems that I spun the Genghis Khan wheel now again this was back in like 2020 or something like that so this was many years ago but even still even back then he wasn't good okay he wasn't good I don't know why I was spinning for the Genghis Khan wheel I I, I I'm not sure okay I genuinely don't know I don't remember what my thought process was I was not a cavalry main I don't know what I was thinking really I really have no idea but between the wheels of fortune for Khan and the wheels of fortune for Chuk, I have spent over 450,000 gems on wheels of fortune for commanders that I literally have never used and will likely never use especially because we already know what the relic is for Khan and it's garbage okay so yeah we uh we really wasted a lot of gems there and again please like the video so that way I can get at least something out of it moving on to mistake number three and that comes in the form of farm accounts I made this farm account this mini Omni arc account on February 24th 2019 okay so that is literally like four months after I started playing the game or something like that and it is embarrassingly behind and that's because for like years I just never used the account I just I don't know why I've just been lazy basically uh there were some times where this account was trapped in a kingdom that I had already migrated out of and I was just too lazy to fix that look even here you can see my consecutive login days is only one and honestly I've been using this account a little bit more lately I am getting some use out of it now but for literally years I just didn't use a farm account and a lot of you guys have always asked like Omni Arc, why are you so low on resources and it's because I just couldn't be bothered to run a farm like that's literally it I just it's the right thing to do you should be doing it if you're watching this video you should have a farm account and especially if you're free to play you should have two or more farm accounts for sure but I'm just lazy there's no other way around it I just don't feel like switching to this account and sending out farmers it, it, it sounds ridiculous I know but like I just couldn't be bothered for a majority of the time that I've been playing and that's my fault and it's my mistake and it's just something that I can talk about in this video I should have been using a farm account I should still be using a farm account and I should honestly still use it more to this day than I normally do I always told myself that like because I've been buying bundles in the game with my main account that I would just use all of my resources on my main from my resources tab and only once that is completely gone then I have justification for using my farm account more and, and that's basically what I've been telling myself and that's kind of true but the problem is gold like I'm gonna run out of gold on my main account way faster than anything else and so I'm never probably going to use down all of the items that I have on my main for transparency you can see I really don't have that much gold to, to begin with okay uh, and I've got way more of everything else especially all this stuff up here but yeah I I mean I just I should just be using my farm man there's really no excuse for it I should be using it it's a mistake not to do it so you should probably do it and if you don't have a farm account yet this is your sign you should make one today mistake number four is I think that I stayed an infantry main player for a little bit too long okay uh and this kind of ties in with you know me spinning the chook wheel right I should have taken that as a sign that I was doing something 
something wrong and realistically looking back on it I probably should have gotten Zhang Yu back when he first came out I think that he has had tremendous staying power in the open fields uh, fighting I think only recently has he sort of begun to fall to the wayside in favor of commanders like obviously Huo but William Joan of Arc Prime Nevsky like there's a lot of things that you can be using besides Zhang Yu these days but he's still like regardless has been around for a really long time this says that I got him in 2021 early 2021 I don't remember if that's when he came out it probably was I probably just unlocked him for the for the bundle purchase but realistically um I should have probably started my transition away from three infantry marches back then uh which was a couple of years ago and I should have gone from from that to two infantry two cavalry one archer that's kind of the setup that I'm running right now and I like it a lot and I feel like I should have been doing that a long time ago because the the writing like the writing was kind of on the wall for infantry uh the biggest problem with infantry is their march speed and I think that that is a huge um literally like you know no pun intended but it's kind of like an anchor right like it really holds them down from being you know something really really great almost to the point where I feel like the devs should reconsider the way that March speed works in the game and I know that like maybe I'm biased because I like infantry a lot but like from a stats perspective like cavalry units are literally just better units like they are statistically better because their march speed is better and there's really no benefit for infantry for being slow right like I feel like if you're gonna make a really slow unit it should be way more tanky than other units which theoretically infantry are but there's really no benefit to being tanky in the open field like it's great for garrisons but march speed doesn't even matter in garrisons right so I feel like perhaps they should increase like the counter attack damage for all infantry units across the border something to benefit infantry to make it worth being slower right because at this point in time there's really no benefit to being slower and it really just hurts infantry and I should have noticed that a few years ago and realized that you know my, my thought was that eventually they would release super powerful infantry commanders like Guan Yu and like CPO Prime and they they kind of stopped after that until just recently with the introduction of Liu Che like he's obviously very good and he is the infantry commander that we've been needing for quite a while but we waited a really long time for somebody this good like over a year since the release of CPO Prime we kind of just had to struggle with Guan CPO the entire time obviously Sargon is okay but again I should have seen the writing on the wall back then and I should have moved away from having a three infantry lineup but it is what it is I finally came around to it I finally realized it and look I still have for those of you saying I'm a trader for infantry okay I'm honestly not I still have three infantry sets that I can use in terms of gear my third sets on my Richard honestly because I use him to kill barbs but also I might put him back in my sunset candy lineup we'll see so at any point in, if infantry has three worthy pairs for the open fields I will be using it and I will be a full infantry man again but as it stands right now I just don't see that being the case unfortunately and I should have switched sooner mistake number five is that in the early game for my first like year of playing I spent very little money I was basically free to play I think I spent max like fifty dollars maybe I really don't know exactly what it was maybe it was a hundred I'm not sure but effectively it was so low that it I was basically a free to play player and as you know I didn't effectively use my farm during that time and one of the problems or one of the mistakes that I made during those those days is that I focused all of my efforts on trying to get to tier five units and in the process I kind of skipped a lot of really important things Alexander the Great I basically skipped him when he came out uh he came out very early on in Rise of Kingdoms and I could have you know gotten a lot more value out of him than I did but I didn't you know I just didn't do it also YSG he was one of the first commanders in the game and I think I skipped his wheel for a while uh if we look here I got him in 2020 bro I've been playing since 2018 I waited so long to get YSG and the reason for that is because I just spent most of my gems on look at that look at that I recruited Alexander the Great at the same time as YSG that's actually crazy um, and that's uh, you could see that that's the turning point that's when I started taking my commanders a lot more seriously in early 2020 and that was around when I started making YouTube videos as well but the reason that I skipped these powerful commanders on the wheels is because I needed to use my gems for things that pushed me closer to tier five I thought that tier five units 
was the end all be all I thought that you basically couldn't fight in the open field without tier five units which obviously is not true everybody knows that tier four are okay you can do decently with tier four you can trade okay with tier four and you know even if you trade evenly or slightly worse then your enemy um if they're using full tier five then their hospital build is going to be way higher than yours so that's still kind of a w for you but i thought that end game started when you got tier five units and i basically operated under that assumption and eventually i got tier five units and then realized i didn't really have any good commanders to put them behind right and that was my problem and in that time i skipped a lot of wheels of fortune and i also skipped a lot of vip investment right i could have been investing a lot heavier in my vip if i didn't spend my gems on things that would get me closer to tier five a lot of times i would spend gems on like books of the covenant for example because you know obviously i was spending during more than gems which is a good tip there but still like you know i should have been grinding forts a little bit more and spending my gems on that a little bit less so that way i could you know still make progress towards t5 but also have good commanders along the way and again i was operating under a very scarce mindset just under the assumption that i'm just not going to have gems for everything and i kind of just had the wrong priorities in place in the early game i was still learning rise of kingdoms basically and i just don't think i made the right choice mistake number six and we're going to go back to guan yu because i said earlier that there were multiple mistakes on the screen and i was not lying guan yu was a mistake for me and by that i mean i used to have a five two five five guan i did I had a 5255 Guan and uh, I used that for a long time. You can see here, I got Guan Yu in 2020. I expertised him near the end of 2022. Okay. So it's been over a year since I expertised him, which honestly is kind of shocking. I didn't realize that it was that long ago, but I don't think I should have expertised Guan. Uh, and I think the reason that I did was because we were going into a kvk and i was still full on infantry main at that point and there just wasn't anywhere for me to use my sculptures effectively i was like i don't know where to get more value from infantry main so i thought okay well i'm just gonna expertise guan because this little bit of bonus here might be enough to be just a like okay right it might be okay and of course I was pairing him with Scipio Prime and I was using an Alexander the Great on the field so I figured okay there's going to be multiple ways for me to get a shield anyway so if I literally have nowhere else to use these sculptures for infantry I might as well make my Guan Yu as best as he can be even if those last 235 sculptures were spent for a very marginal buff here okay and in hindsight I should have just left it I should have just stopped trying to make infantry main a thing I should have saved those 235 sculptures left him at 5255 and just moved on to something else I should have spent those sculptures on really anything else right even if I put it into Zhang Yu at that point it probably would have been a, a better investment even in late 2022 right I could have gotten a, like a good year use out of him but regardless I didn't and I wasted 235 legendary commander sculptures for basically I mean this buff is really it's not that much guys mistake number seven has to do with my starting kingdom and that is kingdom 1062 now when I started rise of kingdoms 1062 was not the newest kingdom okay uh if you guys didn't know I always recommend for brand new players to start playing rise of kingdoms in the latest possible server oh my god oh my god we're up to 3349 jesus christ dude oh my god this server's been up for 47 minutes at the time of recording this this is actually good okay so we've had a lot of new servers in the game okay but i started in an older server because i didn't know what i was doing and people i knew in real life were playing there and that's actually a good thing and i recommend if you know people in real life you should probably play with them i think you'll probably have a better experience in rise of kingdoms because the game is all about community anyway but as if starting in an older kingdom wasn't bad enough i also stayed in that kingdom for quite a while even after a lot of the bigger players migrated out after i think civil war and some other things happened that was so long ago it's hard to even remember what happened in 1062 but i waited for quite a while before migrating out of that kingdom and realistically for the progression of my account and for the pro progression of your account uh, you should probably consider leaving your home kingdom a lot sooner than than you think um if the community there isn't really strong if the kingdom isn't performing super well in their continent i think 
you know once you hit season of conquest you should probably start to consider moving to a kingdom that is super organized super powerful or at least as players that you really enjoy playing with and if that's your home kingdom then great you can stay there but i think for a lot of people they love their home kingdom so much and they don't want to leave and you probably should eventually mistake number eight comes in the form of both Cao Cao and Charles Martel between the two of these I spent hundreds of legendary commander sculptures to get them expertise in particular Cao Cao I probably spent over 300 legendary commander sculptures getting him expertise now here's the thing I know that if you come in here a lot of times people will say that you can see what you spent you can't if it was before 2020 okay July 28th 2020 if you recruited the commander before that date they no longer keep track of it okay and of course as you can see here I recruited him back in 2018 the expertise time is unknown okay uh, but I can guarantee you that because I was effectively free to play in the early game I was dumping my universals into Tao Tao because I thought I was going to be a cavalry main at the beginning of the game and I thought that Cao Cao, you know, I wasn't going to, you know, I didn't have enough gems to spin more for Genghis Khan, which at the time, you know, was okay. I didn't realize how bad he really was. Turns out it was fine that I dodged that bullet sort of. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to win any salad in my governors in my kingdom because we just had stronger players. There were people in my kingdom who were just going to outspend me to win those MGEs. So, you know, as somebody who wanted to be a cavalry main, but didn't really have a way of getting really good cavalry command. I figured well I can expertise Cao Cao and he's going to be better than the epic commanders in the game and that's true especially when he's expertise right but I just didn't realize that he was going to be so irrelevant in the late game and I should have saved those legendary commander sculptures for something else now again I was operating under the assumption that I was going to be free to play forever and I didn't really understand the scope of power creep in the game so I was operating with very limited knowledge of the future of rise of kingdoms but even still i spent probably like i said 300 legendary commander sculptures on Cao Cao, if not more and i definitely regret it and then when it comes to charles martel i probably spent about 50 or 100 legendary commander sculptures on him just to push him towards the expertise now here again we don't know for sure I got him so long ago I actually got him after my Tao Tzu, which is really funny we don't know when I expertise him but um I know for sure that I expertise my Tao Tzu and my Martel way before any other gold key commanders and that is because I spent universals on them which I don't recommend that you do again this is about 400 legendary commander sculptures that I have wasted with 235 for Guan Yu as well for those of you that are keeping track so that is 635 so far in this video and that's a rough estimate because of course we don't know for sure how much I spent on these but I do know that it was a lot especially for Cao Cao mistake number nine is more of a personal mistake for me and that is that I waited like a year to make content for rise of kingdoms even though I kind of wanted to a bit sooner than that I would say after playing the game for maybe six to eight months I kind of was getting the idea that maybe I should make some content for this game and I just didn't because I assumed that you know there were already so many content creators making content for rise of kingdoms and they already had thousands of subscribers and they were sponsored by Lilith and I thought like why would anybody watch my videos over theirs anyway um eventually I did come around eventually I did decide to start you know making content for the game but I think I should have started it sooner I think it would have been better for my channel I think I would have learned more about the game faster and it's just something that I like doing so I regret for me not making content when I first got the idea to do so and finally mistake number 10 comes in the form of expertising Zenobia with YSS I expertised both of these commanders on a whim because I was in a kingdom that didn't really have that many garrison leads and eventually that kingdom is the kingdom that I got zeroed in and I ended up leaving regardless so we haven't gotten that much use or I haven't gotten much use out of my Zenobia YSS uh it's just not aged well for me Zenobia has aged really well she's basically been garrison meta for a long time and I know now obviously there's tons of other options besides just Zenobia but I spent 680 legendary commander sculptures expertising Zenobia just on a whim 
and also uh let's see what i did for my eastern sin we have 537 universal legendary commander sculptures so obviously i did spin the wheel a bit for him but it was basically all a waste it was basically all a waste i really have not gotten that much use out of this pairing definitely you know for a combined total of 1217 legendary commander sculptures on top of the gems that i spent which i didn't even calculate for YSS again you could assume that maybe it was 800 gems per sculpture that's still like 120,000 gems or something like that um I've made a significant investment in this pairing and I was never like a main garrison leader in any kingdom that I've been in and it just wasn't worth it for me part of the reason is crystal tech um you know back when I expertise these commanders crystal tech was a lot different you would get a lot more all damage and a lot of other things at the end of crystal tech uh it was a little bit more powerful they've kind of nerfed it a little bit and really to be a garrison lead you needed to max out crystal tech and uh I just never did I still never do right I'm mainly a field fighter and because of that like there's always somebody who's a better choice for garrison lead than me now there's been a couple of kvks where I put my you know garrison my mixed garrison in like a tertiary flag that is like mildly important if something hits it but you know it really was never anything um you know I, I never really got full value out of this pair and so that's over 1200 legendary commander sculptures that I've literally thrown in the garbage so please if you have not liked this video yet please do it okay I need to get some value out of these commanders somehow and I just you know really they're just on my city wall as a last ditch like oh sh like hopefully I don't get rally but if I do at least they're good for a mixed garrison right the most value that I get out of them these days is shadow legion right like like I never have to worry about losing shadow legion and that's pretty much it and that's really sad that is not worth 1200 legendary commander sculptures and as a little bit of a bonus I'll share with you another sort of selfish uh regret of mine and that is that I never do any farm killing in KVK, right? Like I never go around killing enemy farms. And I also never do any kill trading or, you know, kill event for mightiest governor. I never do any of those things. Right. And because of that, I think a lot of players look at my kill points and they're like, wow, that's low because I've been playing for a long time. And you're right. It is very low. Even the fact that like the first like year, maybe 18 months of me playing, I was sort of free to play. I didn't really have that much to fight with regardless. As I told you, I didn't have any good commanders in the early game. So fighting wasn't that big of an option for me. Even still, my kill points are quite low. And despite that, at at least I know that all these kill points are real kill points okay I've never done any kill trading you can see you know I mean like look look at this look at my tier one kill points boys look at that literally all of my kill points are open field fighting when it matters most and also joining rally and garrisons and all that sort of stuff but basically what I'm saying is a lot of you mother my point is I should have taken every opportunity that I could to boost my kill point numbers because some of y'all in the comment section below make fun of these kill points knowing damn well that a lot of your kill points come from mightiest governor it comes from fighting in home kingdom it comes from kill trading at the end of kvk so you could just get your little 30 million I'm not saying everyone does that but I'm saying a lot of people do it I see it in the lost kingdom chat okay I know y'all do that all the time and it especially happens in kingdoms where a lot of players will be forced to zero themselves on kingdom leadership okay don't think I'm not seeing you guys okay that's a big problem a lot of kingdoms do this all right a lot of players come in and they migrate into kingdoms with a lot of kill points and people think that they're gonna be a, a warrior okay and it turns out that like two billion or three billion other kill points are basically kill points that they got fed to them for free so I know that this is something that happens a lot and yes I know my kill points could be higher but I don't really take criticism of my kill points that seriously because I know where mine came from and I don't know where a lot of other people's do and also it's a game right like if you're gatekeeping fun in a game based on a number like you're kind of a dork but again that's just a little bonus like personal regret of mine basically what I'm saying is I should be I should have lied to you guys okay I should have been lying like a lot of people do to make their stats look better but uh at the end of the day it's probably a good thing that I didn't but guys if you made it to the end of this video hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it have you made any of the mistakes that I've listed on this list let me know in the comment section below and if not what do you think the worst mistake that I made was I think it was the Zenobia YSS that was a huge L for me but you can let me know in the comment section below and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace